In this video, we're going to go back to weighted average and we're going to go this time to the second department. So you'll recall that in the first department, we completed goods and our journal entry was to the second department. Let's take a quick look at that spreadsheet again, just to refresh our memories. We transferred out 717,500 completed units with costs attached of 399,278. Those units went to the second department. Now let's take a look at the spreadsheet for the second department. We want to add to this spreadsheet the goods that were transferred in while they're fresh in our minds, 717,500 units at a cost of $399,278. Now we probably had some units in beginning inventory, so we go and we check with the second department manager. There were 75,000 units that were transferred in last month that we still haven't completed. Those units have transferred in costs associated with them in the amount of $43,500. To those units, we've not yet added any materials. In this example, materials are going to be added at the end of the process. So we haven't added any materials yet, but we have added $2,500 worth of conversion. So the total costs at the beginning of the period were $46,000. During the course of the month, we add $180,800 of materials and an additional $538,575 of conversion costs. So during the month, including the costs that were transferred in from Department 1, we have added $1,118,653. When we want to find out how much we need to account for, we are again just going to add the two amounts, the amount that we had in the beginning inventory plus the amount that we added during the month and that is going to give us the value that we have to account for. Transferred in units are always considered to be 100% complete. They are coming from the other department. They're already 100% complete with respect to being transferred in. So these will always show transferred in beginning and ending degree of completion at 100%. Materials are ended at the end of the process, and so by definition, if we have any units left in work in process at the end of the period, we have not added any materials to them yet, and so that's going to be 0%. And again, it should be 0% at the beginning and at the end of each period. Conversion costs, we have to ask the plant manager, we find out that in this case, conversion is 60% complete. The next step is to figure out how many units we actually completed. Again, we check with the records or we check with the plant manager and we find out that we completed 754,500 units, leaving 38,000 in ending inventory. So let's start our equivalent unit calculations with the transferred in units. We have 754,500 completed units, always 100% complete. We have 38,000 units in ending inventory, and we want to take it, get in the habit of taking it times that degree of completion figure. We have 792,500 equivalent units with respect to transferred in costs. That should make sense since those are always 100% complete. Calculating a cost per equivalent unit under the weighted average method, I just take the total costs and I divide it by the total equivalent units and take that number out six decimal places. For materials, I'm going to pick up the 754,500 again. For the ending whip, I'm going to pick up the 38,000 and multiply it times zero, and that gives me zero. And so the total equivalent units with respect to materials are 754,500 units. And that should also make sense because that's how many we transferred out and materials are added at the end of the process. This may be packaging, right? So the units are packaged and shipped to finished goods inventory immediately with no steps in between. To calculate the cost per unit, I'm going to take the total costs we need to account for. I'm going to divide that by total equivalent units 
and take that number out six decimal places. For conversion, again, I have 754,500 units that are 100% complete because we transferred them out. I have 38,000 units that are only 60% complete. So that's equivalent units of 22,800. And I'm going to add those two numbers together, giving me equivalent units of 777,300 units. To calculate equivalent cost per unit, I'm going to take total costs and divide it by the total number of equivalent units. That leaves me with this number six digits long again. Okay, so I want to calculate how much transferred in costs are transferred out as part of finished goods inventory. I'm going to multiply the completed number times the cost per equivalent unit. And I can just copy that formula across. That is the same formula, right? Every time it's going to be the numbers in this row multiplied by the numbers in this row. For ending inventory, I'm going to pick up the ending whip times the cost per equivalent unit. And I'm going to do that every time. So I can just multiply that across. So the costs that are transferred out are these three numbers totaled. The ending inventory value is these three numbers totaled. Now let's do our check figures. So for this one, I have my total cost to account for, less what's transferred out, less what is staying put, and that gives me zero. I should be able to copy that formula all the way across and get zeros in all cases, and I did. The journal entry now, we're going into finished goods inventory. Finished goods inventory will be the 1,127,551. This comes out of WIP second department or second department WIP. Running out of room there, so I just want to do that. And we're going to pick up that same number. To calculate an equivalent cost per unit, I can take the total amount transferred out and divide it by the total number of units. Or I can add my three cost per equivalent unit together since this is the weighted average method they are the same $1.49 per unit. So this concludes the weighted average method of process costing.